Hello, historians and survival enthusiasts. Welcome back to In the Beginning. Today's topic takes us into the forgotten science of wartime textiles, the kind of practical innovation that never made it to the headlines but quietly changed the course of field survival. Long before synthetic tarps and nylon rainflies became standard gear, Engineers in World War II developed a fabric so effective that it outperformed almost everything that came after it. It was lighter than canvas, stronger under strain, and could repel water for years without chemical coatings. Soldiers called it the miracle cloth, and it came from necessity, not luxury. Because when you're fighting in rain-soaked trenches or crossing swamps with no shelter but your gear, fabric becomes the difference between life and death. So today we're uncovering how this forgotten World War II material worked, how it was made and how you can recreate it today using traditional methods. No synthetics, no gimmicks, just old-world practicality. the need for a fabric that could outlast the elements. When World War II erupted, armies faced something industrial warfare had never prepared them for, constant exposure to the elements without proper supply. Canvas tents and oil-treated tarps used in the First World War were heavy, stiff, and quickly lost waterproofing in humid or tropical climates. In places like Burma, New Guinea, and the Pacific Islands, even a single night of moisture meant soaked gear, ruined rations, and rampant disease. It was, honestly, a constant battle just to keep things dry and safe from the elements. Engineers needed a fabric that wouldn't rot, mould, or absorb weight when wet. Something soldiers could carry easily, but still trust to hold out rain and wind for weeks on end. That's when researchers from Britain and the United States, you know, turned to an unlikely starting point, Egyptian cotton and long staple flax. These natural fibres were prized for their tight weave and tensile strength. But really, the true innovation wasn't the base material. It was what they did to it. Instead of coating the fabric with tar or oil like the old canvas method, they used a chemical swelling process that changed the fibres themselves. This was called ventile cloth, developed in 1941 for RAF pilots flying over cold seas. The goal was simple. If their plane went down, their suit had to keep them alive in freezing water. The fabric worked by tightening itself under water. The brilliance of ventile was its reaction to moisture. When dry, it allowed limited breathability. But when the first drops of water hit, the cotton fibres swelled and locked together so tightly that the fabric became nearly impermeable. There was no coating to crack, no oil to wear off. It was pure mechanical resistance created by nature itself. Tests showed that pilots wearing full ventile suits could survive in icy Atlantic water for up to 20 minutes longer than those in treated canvas, often the difference between life and death while waiting for rescue. Soldiers soon found other uses. Arctic troops stitched it into outer shells for winter gear. Desert regiments use lighter versions to block wind and dust. Even commandos in jungle campaigns use ventile ponchos that doubled as stretchers and ground covers. The material had one strange property. It dried stiff, but as soon as it warmed from body heat, it softened and flexed like ordinary fabric again. 
This adaptability made it invaluable in field conditions where climates shifted rapidly between wet, cold, and scorching heat. Wartime field tests proved it could outperform modern synthetics. By the late 1940s, Ventile had achieved near-legendary status among those who had worn it. Pilots preferred it to early nylon because it didn't melt under heat or cling to skin when burned. Soldiers in the Arctic noted that ice never bonded to it the way it did with tarps or synthetic fabrics. It could handle sub-zero cold without becoming brittle, and unlike wax canvas, it didn't need to be retreated every few months. Even today, the same fabric design is used in extreme weather jackets for polar explorers and bushcraft survivalists who understand the value of silent, durable materials that don't tear or fray. What makes it fascinating is that it was a purely organic solution. No plastics, no laminate membranes, just weaving density and physics. When you hold a piece of authentic ventile, the weight and hand feel are, well, closer to fine denim. Yet its performance matches modern shell gear. It was proof that high technology doesn't always mean synthetic materials. Sometimes, you know, the best engineering is found in perfecting nature's own fibres. Modern survivalists can recreate its principle with simple steps. For those who want to recreate this kind of performance at home, the exact wartime formula is difficult to find, but the principle is simple and achievable. Start with the highest thread count cotton or linen you can source. Tight weaves in the range of 300 to 400 threads per inch. These dense fabrics are naturally water-resistant when treated correctly. So what you want to do is soak them in boiled linseed oil mixed with a small portion of beeswax, about a ten-to-one ratio, and then let the cloth dry flat under tension for, oh, two to three days. Now, this process doesn't replicate Ventile's swelling mechanism perfectly, but it does mimic its watershedding ability remarkably well. Another practical method is to use untreated canvas and apply successive layers of linseed oil diluted with turpentine, making sure each coat is allowed to cure fully. Over several treatments, the fibres tighten and repel water while staying flexible. This makes an excellent tarp substitute or sleeping cloth for long-term camping or survival setups. The key, really, is not just waterproofing, but balancing breathability and strength, precisely what Second World War engineers mastered under pressure. You know, in a survival setting, even just a small section of this treated cloth can serve multiple purposes, like it can be used as a ground sheet, a windbreak, a gear wrap, or even a makeshift poncho if you need it. It's far more sustainable than plastic tarps. And, well, when you store it properly, it can last for decades without losing its integrity. The story of this Second World War cloth isn't just about textile innovation. It's about problem-solving under extreme conditions. Every inch of it reflects a time when necessity drove creativity, when the focus wasn't comfort or fashion, but endurance and survival. Today, Ventile and similar high-density cottons still see use in military-grade flight suits and expedition wear. Yet most modern outdoor enthusiasts have never heard of it, let alone handled it.
For historians and survivalists alike, this fabric represents something rare, a moment when engineering aligned perfectly with nature. It reminds us that not every solution needs to come from a lab. Sometimes it's woven into the legacy of those who endured the worst climates on Earth, armed with nothing but knowledge, resourcefulness and grit. If you found this exploration insightful, don't forget to subscribe to In The Beginning and share this video with others who appreciate the deep connections between history, technology and survival craft. More forgotten innovations from the battlefields and bunkers of the past are waiting to be uncovered, each one carrying lessons that still matter today.